Um, so as Irini said, I'm going to talk today about a project we're doing, looking at how we can um, use gamification in order to support language learning in primary schools. So just to provide a bit of the background and context to the project, in 2014, languages became a compulsory subject in primary schools. So this means that from the age of seven, all children are now learning a language in school. Now, whilst this is a hugely positive step towards expanding language education within the UK, it's also brought with it its own difficulties, particularly for schools, in figuring out how they can go about implementing this new curriculum. Now, traditionally within primary schools, language teaching has focused on teaching vocabulary, so words and chunks of language through songs and poems and different classroom activities and games. However, a key requirement within the new curriculum is that children are able to understand grammar and they're able to understand basic grammar relevant to whichever language that they're learning. Now, often when you talk about grammar, people often associate it being a bit boring, a bit dull, and often the more complex and difficult aspects of learning a language. And so teachers and researchers such as myself have been asking and thinking about how can we be teaching grammar in a way that's gonna be engaging and effective for these young learners. Now, as I said, there's been a number of issues that have come up with language teaching in primary schools. So first of all, there's um, a lack of resources. So a majority of the online and digital resources that are available for learning focus on teaching vocabulary. And for those that do exist, there's not always that much evidence about what benefits these might actually bring. The second big issue that we have relates to time. In many schools, I think in over 80% of primary schools, they allow between 30 and 60 minutes per week for the language teaching. And this is quite a short amount of time in which to deliver the full requirements of the national curriculum. And the third issue that's come up relates to teacher confidence and expertise. So in over 50% of primary schools, it's the class teacher who's been asked to now teach the language in whichever language the school has decided that they're going to teach. And very often, these teachers may have little, if any, knowledge of the language that they've been asked to teach. And so teacher confidence is a real issue, particularly when it comes to teaching what are perceived as the more complex or difficult aspects of the language, such as grammar. And so in response to these issues, we've been looking at how we can bring together language teaching research and um, best practice from the classroom, and also gamification and game design in order to develop a digital game that can be used to support language teaching and particularly grammar teaching within the classroom. Now, just to explain a little bit about the teaching behind it, it's based on a teaching method called form meaning mapping. And the idea here is that you're giving the, the children lots of listening and reading practice where the, it, that's going to direct their attention to those grammar features that normally they might overlook or ignore when they're reading or listening to a foreign language. So, for example, if you think about the sentence, yesterday I walked to the shops. We already know from yesterday at the start that this thing happened in the past. And so um, what learners tend to do then, they'll ignore the ED that's on the end of the verb because they already know we're talking about the past. And so, therefore, that learning doesn't happen. And so we've taken this research method, and there's a lot of research evidence to demonstrate that this is effective with a range of learners and ability and ages and languages, and we situated it within a game. We built a game around it. And the idea within the game is that the player is a spy and they're fighting to take back the world from an enemy organization. And by learning the grammar, they're able to crack the code that this organization used to communicate. And within the game, the first thing that they see is, oh, hang on, we've progressed further than I anticipated. Okay, um, okay. So within the game, the first thing they'll see is the world map. And at each location, they'll have a mission or a mini game to complete. And each mini game focuses on teaching a particular grammar feature. So now, hopefully it'll work. I'm going to show you a short video clip just to give you a taste of what the game itself is like. OK, there's no sound, but it is <laughs> playing. So this is all being read out at this point. Oh, we might have sound. Greetings, Agent. You are in an enemy base. You must pretend to be an enemy agent. Be careful, Agent. Do not let the robots discover you. Each time, you must decide whether to feed one robot or feed all of the robots. This robot wants to say something. Click on him to hear what he has to say. 
Je mange des tomates. The verb mange ends in e. The e ending is used with je, which means I. Press the bell before the time runs out. Nous mangeons du chocolat. The verb mangeons ends in on. The on ending is used with nous, which means we. Okay, so that just gives you a bit of a taste of what the game is like and what the children experience when they're playing the game. So as I said, we've taken this teaching method and we've got research showing that this is a, a good teaching method, it works, and that the children learn. So why put it in a game? What benefits is adding a game into the mix and all that time and expense of creating a game? What benefits is that going to bring? Well, the first thing that people often say when, when we're talking about games in the context of education is that games are fun and they can provide a more motivating and engaging environment in which the children can engage in that learning. And we know that in learning, motivation, motivation is driven by a sense of progression, by the learner feeling that they're making progress and they're learning something new, and also by a sense of enjoyment, that they're enjoying the activities and the lessons that they're engaged in. And when we think about games, by their very nature, they're goal-oriented. So the player is, wor the, is working towards a particular goal or outcome. And also, they have that inbuilt reward system, so the player is constantly getting that feedback on how they're progressing and the performance that they're giving. And so these factors can help to foster that sense of motivation and engagement. And this is actually what we found as well in our recent work with local primary schools. So we took the game into some schools to see how children re respond. And on the screen there, you can see some of the comments that the children made. And I was particularly struck by my interaction with one boy. In the first few game sessions, he was really struggling. And he had a really difficult time with the learning content. And he was struggling with the game. He was struggling to make any progress. And he often was failing levels and having to replay. And then in the very last lesson, his hand shot up and he said, Miss, I got two stars. That's the best I've ever done. And he really persisted all the way through. You could see at the end when he won those stars, the pride on his face. He was so pleased. And right from that very first session, he kept trying, he kept playing, learning from every attempt, and eventually he was successful. And having that motivation of wanting to complete the game and win the stars, that kept him going and kept him playing, and eventually he was able to achieve that goal. Now, the game context also means that we can then embed that learning within a more communicative and meaningful context in which the learner is using the knowledge that they're building in order to achieve certain goals or outcomes in the game itself. So you saw from the robot food game we saw in the clip, the goal of that game is for the player to feed the robots and to keep them happy and they'll win the game. But they can only do that by paying attention to what the robot's saying and paying attention to those particular grammar features. So paying attention to the fact whether it says I or we at the start and whether the verb is singular or plural. And on the screen, this is an example of another game in which the goal is to log mission reports and stamp mission files, either as accomplished or continuing. But the player can only do that by paying attention to whether what the spy says is in the present or the past tense. So by intertwining the learning and the gameplay, it creates an environment in which the learner is able to um, more greatly understand the importance and the meaning of that feature within the context of the game. And it also creates a scenario in which success in learning is success in the game itself and vice versa. And that in itself can be more motivating and engaging. And interestingly, this is often the hardest balance to strike when it comes to developing educational games and, and softwares. Getting that balance between faithfully implementing the learning or the teaching that you want to do, whilst also making a game that's fun to play. And getting that balance is important because you want to make sure the game teaches what it's supposed to teach, but also that the player is going to want to come back and keep playing. And using a digital platform also means that we can have a lot of other benefits. For example, it allows us to more quickly and efficiently track the progress of every single player. 
So this is useful for teachers in monitoring the progress of all of the pupils in their class at the same time. And also for us as researchers, it means we can gather more fine-grained and nuanced information about the language learning process. So not only can we see before and after the game what they've learned, but also we can see all the way through playing that game exactly how that knowledge was developing and how that learning process was happening. And of course, the, the players themselves will um, receive that um, data back in their own progress scores and seeing how they're progressing within the game. Now, finally, what I think is perhaps one of the biggest potential impacts of games within education is the potential they offer for being able to personalize the learning experience. So as a teacher, I've stood in front of classes of 25 or 30 pupils, all of whom have very different needs and abilities and backgrounds and experiences. And I always ask myself, how can I make sure that my teaching is going to have an impact on and benefit every single pupil within that room, no matter what stage of learning they're at? And so by harnessing the data that's generated through every interaction that the player has in the game, we can use that in order to develop tools that can adapt more intelligently and dynamically to the needs and ability of every single individual at any one point in the game. So for example, giving more adaptive tutorials or more individualized feedback or by allowing learners to progress onto more complex, um, uh, more complex levels as soon as they're ready, or by allowing them a bit more practice and reinforcement in earlier levels if, they're, if, if it's needed. And this can help then make sure that every single individual is able to make progress in the game and ultimately then progress in their learning. And so we're hoping through the Gaming Grammar Project to um, provide one demonstration of how games can be used to um, have a positive impact in providing a more motivating, meaningful, and personalized learning experience for every single learner, no matter the stage of learning they're at. Thank you very much. Thank you.